evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Top Talk guest webinar session. I have Ken Byrne, hopefully waiting in the wings. I know he's there. We've been chatting briefly. Good evening, Ken. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. Now, we have a slight delay. Ken is joining us from Ireland. Uh, I'm here in Cardiff in South Wales. We've got a little bit of a delay between us, but once Ken takes over the screen, uh, you should be seeing it all in his time. So, Ken, just before I do hand you the screen, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your journey into photography, and uh, before we get into tonight's flashing where the sun don't shine. Okay, cool. Um, I'll, tell, I'll give it a really quick summary as to how I got into photography because it's a very long story. And um, believe it or not, it all kind of happened out of spite. I know that's not your usual story that you hear, that usually it was a, a trip, but no, it, it happened out of spite. I was um, only about 17, and um, I had the, the girlfriend I had at the time, um, I was trying to get her to work because we were renting, and I wanted her to get a job anywhere at all because we couldn't afford all the rent on my own. Um, I had fallen and broken my arm, and I was out of work for a while. So we started looking around, I looked into papers and stuff, and we seen a job for a portrait photographer coming up. It was to travel around to um, the shopping centres, do all kiddies' portraits, company vans supplied, mobile phones supplied, everything. I thought this was brilliant. And I talked her into getting it, and she wouldn't do it. And I remember her last words to me before we actually broke up. She says, if you think it's such a great job, then why don't you do it? So <laughs> I, I went and I applied and I actually got the job. And believe it or not, that's how I got started in photography. It turns out I was actually pretty good at it. So uh, I decided to stay at it and I got trained. I trained very, very hard through that company. I left that company, went to another company doing the schools in Ireland, the largest schools photography company in Ireland. And in 2010, I opened the doors to my very own business, uh, going for weddings, and I still kept a couple of schools on, but mostly into the wedding industry. I registered with the SWPP. I met an amazing man called John Denton, who absolutely changed my world completely in terms of how I seen photography, how I worked with light, how I worked with people, and everything kind of snowballed from there. It's it's all John's fault. <laughs> He's the reason you have to listen to me tonight. It's all his fault. <laughs> so he uh, changed absolutely everything that I had going on for me. And um, that's where it brought me to here right now today. So if, if, if it's okay with you, Jay, I, I might start talking about the master's class, if that's all right. Absolutely. Please, please do. All right, cool. Well, when we originally got the, we seen the, the application that we could send in, we struggled with a name. We wanted to come up with something quite tongue-in-cheek that would stand out from the rest, stand out from the norm. And my favorite lighting accessory uh, is a strip box. And John taught us how to do nudes. And that's how I learned to develop my eye about light and everything by shooting nudes. So when I'm out at a wedding, I'm usually using a strip box on an off-camera flash. And I remember we were messing one night, but I actually thought it was ingenious. And we called it the stripper behind the veil. And we, <laughs> we sent it in. But when we sent it in, we got an email back on half of our office think it's your absolute genius. The other half think absolutely not. So we had to change it. So we left it open to interpretation with flashing where the sun don't shine. Now, obviously, I'm from Ireland. So when I say the sun don't shine, it it don't shine, but um, that's that's completely up to you. What way you want to take that up? And with that in mind, this uh, image that I'm starting with, as I was saying, um, you know, sun doesn't usually shine too quick in Ireland, too for too long. So I actually just want to start with this one, where we used our off-camera flash. We got a really funky kind of reflection, and if, to me, this one kind of sums it up. You know, flashing where the sun don't shine. You can see the black clouds behind them there, and you can see that we caught that lovely little moment. And in this tonight, what I want to do is I want to go into the few different elements of light, pose, story, location, you know, impact or emotion, whichever you want to call it. Um, this shot to me really does have a lot of that entailed. So I'm going to move on to the next one for you. Um, I just wanted to show you a couple of examples of when the sun actually does come out a little bit. We still have it pretty cloudy, but as you can see, where we're going with a small bit of sunshine, and we can actually work with that. It doesn't always have to entail flash. Yeah, as you can see, what I was saying, it is it is mostly dark and dramatic, which is also very, very cool. Um, but with that little bit of off-camera flash, we can always draw out that detail in the clouds. We can always make it a little bit more dramatic than what it even is without the off-camera flash. So there's always positives to these kind of things. Um, I know that if you were to light this without the flash, you still get a little bit of the sky, but it's mostly just white and, and plain and, and 
a little bit boring, should I say. Probably should never say that, but it does be a little bit. Um, so I, I fire in that little dab of flash just to bring out that detail of the clouds and to make something more out of what we've already had. So we're, we're turning positives out of negatives on the day is what I like to try and do. Um, you, can, you can clearly see it there. You can see where they're lit with the off-camera flash. You can see where the detail and the clouds are coming in. And it's, it's, a, it's a, for me, it's a really nice image. And it tells that story of the day. It tells everything that I wanted to tell throughout. Um, this was another example of what I wanted to show you. Again, it's, it's cloudy. <laughs> Majority of the time, it ends up quite cloudy in Ireland. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. We just have to work with it. Um, and I do my very, very best to work with it. Um, again, my biggest way of doing that is to use our off-camera flash. It's not too much got to do with location. It's more got to do with light for me. And I'm going to actually get into that as we roll through these through the, the rest of the seminar. I'm going to get into detail about uh, the most important thing for me would be light. And um, the story is the overall. Uh, you have to have a story in your images. Location is probably the the least amount of my worries. That when I go on to location, the first thing I look for is pockets of light. I look for natural light. If I have to create my own light, then I will. But if, if I can use natural light and off-camera flash and blend the two of them together um, to get something that's overall very dramatic, something that's a, a bit of a wow factor, that when people turn, when the bride and groom come back to you and they get this image that they couldn't see those clouds as detailed as that with their naked eye, that when they actually come back to you and you hand them out that printer, you hand them their USB, whichever it is you want to give them, they actually turn around and go, wow, that's, that's fantastic. And that's what it's all about for me. I'm more into giving than it is anything else. I brought in a slide to show you that every now and then we do actually get a bit of sunlight. And when it does come out, when it does poke us out, we love to play with it. We, we really do. Um, with this one here, like we've obviously gone against it with the flash, and we've used the sunlight to add in something into the background. Um, you could have turned them towards the sunlight, but then I didn't have that a nice archway in the back way. I wanted to get that shadow on the ground um, to mirror them. And the couple, you can see that the couple are having fun. You can see that we've drawn out that little bit of emotion from them as well. Um, do off camera flash, same thing again. If, for me, it's a godsend. I've got my detail in the clouds. I'm able to expose properly to get the sun to come through. And these little factors for me are what make a difference. And they, they can put you that one step ahead of your competition down the road of whatever they want to do. It is a bit of hassle to bring out the off camera flash, which, you know, some of them are big, they're bulky. We use the Bones 400 hours. They're not huge, but they're quite heavy. And only for just two of us on the day, it probably will be very difficult to do it. I'm sure there's ways of working it, but I find it just very, very handy to have an assistant with me. There's just another example of what we can do with sunlight. Now, I could have done that very same shot without flash. It wouldn't have made a huge difference, except they would have turned to a silhouette. A lovely shot. A lot of guys do it. A lot of guys pull it off really well. But for me, I wanted to fill that, that shallow so there would be no silhouette with the flash. And I wanted to create, again, that really nice dramatic image with that really nice clouds to get behind them. We have the sun peering through. I guess you could say, you know, she's stealing his soul. I mean, <laughs> it does happen, you know. That's just what happens when you get married out here. Um, rain. It rains a lot. It, it really does. So, in turn, it is up to us to make the most of it. Um, again, turn that negative into a positive. Um, rain drops for effect on the window. It came out really well. Um, I know it actually looks quite sunny there. It's not. Again, as you probably guessed, that's off-camera flash that we've, we've balanced the two of them up with. There's no Photoshop here. That shot was actually taken literally from their slideshow. Um, I haven't done anything to it. That's the way we call it in camera. And to me, it has a story in itself. It came out really, really well. Uh, it was raining, but like I said, to turn those negatives into positives, there's the raindrops all over the window just for yourself to have a see. It adds to the effect. doesn't take away from it. works very well, in my opinion. Uh, Ken, I'm going to jump in. Issue. Sorry, Ken, Ken, sorry to interrupt. I'm going to jump in because we've got a, a few questions. So, uh, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, I just want, because we were talking about, you know, talking specifically, a lot of people are asking, because you mentioned earlier on that obviously your favourite uh, was a strip box. Are you using these on the weddings? I am. I am. When I bring out the off-camera flash and the bones, I tend to bring two with me. I tend to bring a soft box, um, again, depending on the light. If I have quite a dark day, I'd probably end up going with the soft box, to be honest. And if I have quite hard light, I'll use my strip box. 
because um, again, if I have lots of sunshine and I have a really bright day <laughs> in Ireland, yeah, well, if I have quite a bright day, as much sunshine as Ireland allows us to have, I'll use the strip box because it's easier for me to feather the body and to put those shadows where I want them put as opposed to softbox obviously has a bigger spill. Um, I'd use that more on a darker day to keep the, the tone of it down a little bit. And again, it's all about blending that light. It's about blending the background with the foreground and making sure that they all balance up at the end of it. Excellent. And um, so obviously you you were saying there that, uh, and one of the questions that came up, but you kind of answered it already. Uh, obviously the light is off camera. You're not shooting on camera. These are lights that are off camera, right? And you're directing the light from the angles that you want them. Um, almost always. Um, it's, it's very rare I use the on-camera flash. Uh, nothing against it. It's a fantastic flash. It can work really, really well for a lot of people. I'm just a big fan of off-camera flash. Um, that, might, that might be going back to the time where your man had the gunpowder holding off to the left and getting burnt from it and stuff. I don't know. Maybe I got reincarnated. <laughs> but for me, I just really like what the effects I can gather from the off-camera flash. It's more punchy as well. The on-camera flash for me is a little bit flat. I don't get that dramatic effect that I'm looking for. I don't get the light to spill across the body the way I really want it to. So off-camera flash for me is, is definitely the way to go um, if I don't have enough natural light to play with. Okay. Uh, when using flash, then, this is the question that came through. Are you genuinely underexposing your image um, or are you compensating, with, which is the, your favourite way to work? Um, I rarely underexpose. I'd usually compensate, as in get just get that really nice balance. Make sure that I have the exposure for the background, and then expose the light for my foreground, as in my model or my couple. Um, you can't. I I know you can underexpose, and you get a very dramatic effect. But for me, if it goes too dark, especially at weddings and stuff, it can kind of turn the opposite way on you. You need to keep a really fine balance. I find um, as to how dark you really want to go with it. And the last one I've got for now, Ken, um, what are you using to trigger your off-camera flash on a wedding? Oh, the Bones 400 hours actually come with their own little wireless transmitters. Um, so it's all built in. And then I have my little trigger that I just click onto the top of the camera. Perfect. Mate, it's all back over to you. All right, cool. This shoot that I'm about to show you, I actually done specifically for our webinar today. Um, what I've done is I've done all these... If, uh, all these scenes that are about to come up with just two lights. Um, I coloured it with red and a blue gel, so you can see exactly where the lights are actually spilling onto. To the, the blue light, to my right and on my left, um, is actually my strip box, um, my favourite accessory, as I said. And I lit her in blue on that side, so you can actually see exactly where I have the light pointing, where I have the light facing the board. So it spills just perfectly, puts in lovely shadows exactly where I want them to be. The red we've actually put in on barn doors and a gel light. So it is quite wide spill, excuse me. But at the same time, it's really just for that kind of key light or that little background light just to, to rim off her shoulder and on her head and stuff. And you can see exactly the kind of image that I'm looking for with those two lights. Now, there's a black and white one in a minute that'll show you the two lights if they were just the one color, exactly the same effect we can get. But I've done this in blue and red specifically just to show you where they should, where in my opinion they should hit, and you should be aiming for when doing this kind of shot. Um, the other thing we've done is in this one that this was a new model, obviously that came down. That was the closest thing to a wedding dress that she had with her. <laughs> so yeah, when you see her in that, that's her clothed, and I'll also show you her absolutely nude. So you can see this is where I learned to develop my eye. You can see I learned exactly where her shadows are there. You can see where her muscle tone is, where her ribs are, all from like nude, the nude body form. Um, I kept the very next one like this. So it's a pretty much the exact same pose. I'm going to go back and forth. For a that was her completely nude. Very similar pose in the exact same lighting, just with the, well, should we call it a wedding dress? I don't know. <laughs> Let's call it a wedding dress for now. So you can see as she's clothed and without any clothes at all. That's what helps me anyway. Um, it's not a must, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of people um, are very interested in this. A lot of people have no interest in it. But for me, when I met John and started lighting like this, it completely changed my world. And I was all learning how to light the human form without any distractions, without any clothing, without anything else to get in the way. I didn't have to look for tags. I didn't have to make sure that the, it was falling across their body right, anything like that. It brought me back to the bare essential, light and pose. 
and from that, that's where we always obviously try and get our stove. There's no location, it's just the background. The smoke, to be fair, I threw in just for a bit of crack because I wanted to. <laughs> I could have done it without it, but I think it looks really good with it. Again, there you go. You can see where the light spills across. So that could be a wedding dress, it could be a cake, it could be whatever you want it to wear. But if you keep the light consistent, keep the poles very similar, no matter what you do, once you get the light right, the images start to fall together, in my opinion. This is one, I turned this one black and white, because I wanted you to see, as if it wasn't blue and red, you still have two lights. You can still put them in the exact same places. Um, same with varieties, but once you keep the poles the same, the results should be identical. And there you go, so without blue and, blue and red, they were just two white lights or Kelvin colors, whatever you wanted. There's your nice effect. And that's our wedding dress again, as we said. <laughs> this one, I used a very large softbox. I've actually got a six foot, I think it's a six foot by a two foot softbox. And I put it up nice and high and used a reflector. I done this one solely just to resemble as if it was a large window light. So you could have been in a manor house, you could have been in a castle, it could be just a hotel with a large window. I've done this one just to show you the kind of light that you can get just from one source. Now I do have a reflector to our left, to our right. And that's what kind of lightens the shadows a little bit. Again, at the moment, she's nude. Had she put on her little wedding dress again or whatever else you wanted to wear, you can achieve the exact same results just by learning how to light the phone. Now, it doesn't always have to be flat. It doesn't always have to be natural light. Sometimes you have to use what God gives you. In this particular instance here, I have Gareth, he's a groom. And just outside the bedroom, he's getting ready in. We had just one of the down lighting little... Uh, lights that are flush with the ceiling. Um, remember, just as we walked out, it, there was no light anywhere really in the house, so we had to create our own. So I found that little fixture. I got to walk out, had the shirt open, quite a stylized image. Yeah, I don't know if he could do modeling, but <laughs> I told him he could, and we got a really good shot. For me, I think that worked really, really well, and I'm chuffed to bits with it. And all it was, there was no reflector, there was nothing, no flash, it was just one tiny little down lighting that's embedded in the ceiling. Yeah, go back to no matter what location we have, it should always begin with light. There's pockets of light everywhere to use. You literally just have to go and find them. Um, and like I said, sometimes you have to create your own light. But in this instance here, this actually is the hotel in Athlone, which is probably one of the nicest hotels to go to. Uh, this is the spa area in the hotel. Now, we went down there, specifically kind of as a test really more than anything else. We, we really wanted to do something different. I didn't want to crack a flash. I, we had no natural light. There's very, very few windows down here, obviously. So this is actually the table where to do manicures. They, you know, to do the nails and paint and everything like that. So we cleared it off, and we, we put our model up here. And we used the actual lights that they use just when looking at hands. Now, turned the color tungsten on the camera and shot away. And that one, pretty much straight out camera, you could have got that exact result. We had very little to do with this. It's like I said just finding that little bit of light that you need in order to get the shot that you want. Um, for me, light always comes first. It's always light first, and then we can walk into poles. Um, you know, if you find that nice pocket of light, you have her in a pose. Well, why is she posing like that? What is she doing standing in that light, in that pose, or in this case, lying down? There, there has to be a story, and that's where story comes into it for me. So it goes light, pose, story. Location, doesn't mean a whole lot to me, I'm afraid. It really doesn't matter what location we go to. I always like to look for the light first. And then, of course, you have your impact or emotion, whichever one you want to evoke from it. Um, emotion's a biggie with weddings. It's absolutely brilliant. But the impact, because a shot like that, to me, it kind of stops in your tracks. And you have to look at this one twice. Go, Ooh, yeah, I like that. Half the people don't even know why they like it. They just know that they like it. <laughs> and that's absolutely fine by me. Uh, there we go, blending more light tones. And um, this one here, this, this is actually over a swimming pool. And just underneath here, at the very bottom, you can see how the light is a completely different color. Now, if this is very, you know, kind of angel over hell kind of a thing, it's, it's quite torn. But for me, there's a huge story in this. Now, if you look at this and see your own story, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't have to be the story I want you to see. But once you have a story in it, you can see the light. You can see exactly how the light is working with her figure. You can see how her pose works with the light in return. And then you can see how this overall story comes together. Now, in this one, fair enough, the location did actually help a lot as to where we are and what we're doing. But even without that location, it could have been 
any kind of a location, once we have a similar lighting setup, similar pose, we still get that story that we're looking for. Sometimes you just have to create your own light source. Uh, this here was actually just a staircase. That, that's all it was. These little lanterns are the whole way up when you walk up the stairs. Uh, they were cool. We wanted to do something with them. We didn't know what we could do with them. The light just wasn't strong enough to give her any kind of definition at all. So we stuck on a snoot. Well, we don't use the snoot very often, but in this case, it worked really, really well. It's that little spotlight. It makes it look kind of famous in a way. <laughs> so sometimes you got to create your own. And in hindsight to that, here's blending the light that's already there. You know, it's the same with the last image. There's already light on the wall. It wasn't strong enough to do anything with it. So we threw in the snoot. And in this case, it's actually the very same one. It's the snoot as well. It's an entirely different day, an entirely different image, entirely different scene, a very similar lighting setup. And um, if you can't find that right balance, like if your light was up too high here, or if the background lights were down too low, you know yourself, it's it's not going to work. So for me, again, find that balance, make it work, and create that story you want people to see. Uh, yeah, in terms of location, it doesn't mean you know you have to have a big fancy venue location. And um, what the accessories the location have to offer? And I'd always always pick light over that location. So you can actually see what we've done there. Now this is off-camera flash, far off to the right. We've shot it through this, making a kind of a Venetian-style light to, to fall in for a model. Um, yeah, we went really, really dark. The walls aren't actually that grotty and everything like that. But again, going for story, that was the story I wanted to tell. <laughs> like It's new rocks in the wedding dress. You're not going to see that too often. <laughs> but that was the story I wanted to tell, and I wanted to fill this full of impact. And anybody that sees that image, they'll always take a second look because you got to wonder what's going on. Why is she in the wedding dress? What's after happening? So there you go, guys. Put your own story to it and see what you come up with. This was actually how that all came about by taking creative shoots. I always try, at least every other month, if, if not every third month anyway, to take a day out, just head off myself on you. We grab a model, we do a creative shoot. Let it be nude, let it be fashion, let it be whatever you want it to be. But to stay creative, is a key. Not everybody does it. You get stagnant. You start to get stale. You start to get bogged down. There's there's so much work that you have to get done. There's so much work you have to get out. You've got so many brides coming in shouting at you, I want my stuff back, I want my stuff back. You're working 16, you're working 20 hour days. It's very hard on the body. It's very easy to become stagnant. It's very easy to, you know, to fall behind in your work and to get very unhappy at what you're doing. And that's not something I want. I have a huge interest in photography. It's something that I've, I've always had an interest in. And ever since I actually got rolling at the age of 17, I've never looked back. I've always looked forward. I'm always very interested in learning new tricks and new techniques. And even if I'm not training with one of the top guys out there to train with, I'm off playing on my own. New model. This light I actually shot through a stairs. Now, I know, it's strange. How do you think of that? I don't really know. <laughs> um, we, just, we were looking at shapes and shadows, and I wanted to do something quite different. And there's a timber stairs right in front of her, quite a large one, and we shot the light through that to make that style. Um, same thing for me. It worked really, really well, and I can actually implement that now if she was wearing a dress, if she was in a, in a hotel with a staircase like that, put herself and the groom there together, fired the light through the stairs, Lo and behold, you have this really cool image that nobody was able to see with the next guy. All I wonder, how the hell did you do that? It makes you become that guy. You're now that guy or that girl that's able to create something that wasn't even there. And that's what get, it began to get people to talk about you. And people who want to hear more about you, who want to see more of the man's thing you can do. And if you're that guy or that girl, then it's going to go around that little bit faster. And the next time you walk into a hotel, the turn go, Oh, you're that person. Yeah, you shot the light. Oh, that was brilliant. I don't know how you did that. Can you do it again? Yeah, of course I can. I'm not telling you how. <laughs> and of course, natural light. Natural light's a biggie. It's an absolute must, in my opinion, for every photographer to know how to use. Um, Off-camera flash is fantastic. It's amazing. As you can plainly see, it is my favorite light source. But you must be able to use natural light because off-camera flash will not work all the time. There will always be a time or place where your flash is too strong, it's too big to get into that little room, you can't use it all of the time. So natural light, a simple window light, this, she is literally just sitting on a little pooch right by her window. That's how we lit this. No tricks, nothing else like that, there's not even a reflector. 
it was just one simple window light. Now, I can actually relate that right back to the nudes, because until I shot nudes, I started learning how to actually light them and do light carving. I probably wouldn't have been able to actually create this image, even with natural light or flash or anything. But that's just natural light, an absolute. Uh, yes, just get more into that story about light and pose. And uh, I hope you can see the story evolving now. Um, and again, for me, just without having to repeat myself too often, it's all about light and pose before location. Story should come. If the light is right and the pose is right, the story should be there. Um, you can, of course, you provoke emotion by uh, playing little tricks and games, like little mind games, and getting them to look in certain directions, getting your couple to play. There's obviously no couple here in front of you at the moment. It's just their bride getting ready. Something different. I got a little bit bored doing the usual, here's the dress hanging up on a window, here's the bouquet splashed across the table or the floor. So I need a body. And to tell that story, I want that body. There's something happening now. Yes, she's pulling up the, the sleeve and she's getting into her dress. You can see in the mirror just behind her that the dress is actually open and you still have that small bit of light carbon there even though you can't really make it out. But once she's putting this dress on, now the shot after this, I probably would have zoomed in on the detail on the dress. So I'm still getting the detail. I'm getting something happening, there's motion in the images, and there's a whole story evolving. Just got to be, again, with the right light and with the right pose. This is an entirely different bride, and it's actually the opposite sequence. It's where she's actually getting out of her robes. And the very next shot I took, after she got out of her robes, was her getting into her robes. Or getting into her dress, not her robes. She's getting out of her robes and into her dress. Um, for me, shooting sequence. So you're, you're shooting for the story. I don't mean literally stand there and pin down your shutter release and just shoot like a machine gun. You actually think the story, do it step by step. It, it, you know, this one I probably took in about two shots. It's a skylight window. That's all it is, a skylight just coming down. Um, I think I have a reflector there just to our left of her. Um, but it's the same thing. Nice little pose, lovely pocket of light. This house was huge. We're not using any of the rest of the house. Just that one little window light. And uh, again... That image is it's striking. It's working really well for me. Same thing. That's her getting into her dress. I would have zoomed in. I would have got the detail on her dress as she was putting it on, even after she was putting it on. You just get the details there. People want details. Women especially love details. For us, well, for me, story all day, every day. Uh, it's just another example of a window light, of a beauty shot, a bride. Uh, she's already done up, hair, makeup. I tend not to go out and shoot when they're in their curlers or bloody brushing their teeth or whatever it is that they're doing that morning because the wedding day for me is all about looking your best. So if I can get them looking their very best, I'm telling their story of how they look on the day and what they're doing as opposed to getting there and taking those random shots of what's actually just happened in the background. I know they work very well for a lot of people and I'm not saying you don't do them. You do whatever you want to do. I'm just giving you my insight as to why I do what I do and why it's actually working for me. Um, there you go, it's just examples of natural light, uh, the right pose, right direction, beautiful light carbon. That one there, we had a lovely accessory, we had that really funky veil. Um, personally, I would prefer if I was able to get the two of those to link over her eye, but we tried that, we couldn't. We felt like we might actually end up messing up her hair and thought, best to quit while we're ahead, and we put it right there. I still love that image, it works really, really well for me. And story with impact. That one, that image there, that's her dad, and you can see her mom off to her left. You, you have to stop at that one. That just pulls at your heartstrings. It's it's one of those images where you just look at it and go, oh, even for a fella, and an Irish fella at that, we don't have feelings. We know this, right? <laughs> so even at that, you look at that image and you go, wow, do you know, that's that's really nice. It's emotion. And that's an Irish dad. They don't get too emotional either. <laughs> but it's working there. And it's one of those images I know that they will love forever lots of time to come. That was just a completely different bride with mum, something similar. These wedding days, they do bring out a lot of tears. <laughs> uh, love tears. I love making brides cry. Terrible, isn't it? What can you do? <laughs> um, again, there's that emotion again. It's just a lovely little pose in that lovely pocket of light. This is actually a loading bay, but the texture in the wall I thought was fantastic. We have sunlight here that's being in top of Now, I doubled it up with flash because I wanted to lift the shadows. I wanted to create that extra bit of impact, just that extra bit of punch. Uh, sunlight alone would have been grand. It would have been lovely. It was in a slightly wrong angle for me. You can see it where it's actually spilled onto the wall and bringing out the texture. Very happy with that. 
but the flash just makes them stand out in the background, makes them pop that little bit more. And for me, again, lifts their shadow, it makes this image something that it wasn't with just sunlight, it's not the fan. You don't always have to use flash. Um, as David Bailey once said, I use available light. I won't say too much about that. I'm sure you've all seen it later on Facebook. But it's available light, we should be able to use. It's not just natural light, it's not just flash. As photographers, as professional photographers, we should be able to use whatever light is available to us. For this one here, yeah, it's just a silhouette. All, I, all I've really exposed to is the sky in the background, which was, was my I, I actually took this shot with flash beforehand and exposed for them correctly with the sky. And it was it was nice. It was really nice. I was happy with it. But when I turned off the flash and shot for again, it just meant a little bit more to me. You don't always have to use flash. You can work with whatever your God gives you. Let it be that light in the ceiling from earlier on. Let it be flash. Let it be natural light from the window. Or let it be just that beautiful sky in a nice silhouette. It it will work. If you, you set it up properly, it will work for you. Don't get stagnant. Try new things. Try them out. Go on those play days. See what you can create. It's just another example of natural light. Pause. Sorry. Location. You're probably sick of hearing that by now. I'm going to stop repeating it. <laughs> but it really is. They're your key elements. With all those elements, even just using half of them, you still create really, really good images. Um, this cathedral is St. Peter and Paul's Cathedral in Athlone here in Ireland. It is huge. It's colossal. But rather than do the same thing that most people would do, and use a big altar because it's a really big dramatic altar and stuff. It has lots of spotlights coming down. You can turn it to tungsten and do some really cool effects. This was actually just natural light coming down from the window. And we have this lovely little pillar. We have a gorgeous bride. We have a put in position. You can see we almost have that perfect little Rembrandt V on her cheek. Um, tricky enough to get, but it worked really well. And it's an image, again, that makes you stop. and makes you look at it twice. Um, so rather than do what your competition would do down the road, even because you know that they're going to go, yeah, that's the altar, that's the shot I'm going to do. I do it every time I come in, I'm going to do it again. So rather than do the same thing, mix it up. Go find that little pocket of light. Look out into the corners. There's no big, huge location here, even though we're in a fantastic one. We still went for that beautiful little pocket and created a really amazing image, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just an example of why location doesn't really mean a whole lot. That was just something completely different. We have this big mirror, we have this Chrysler, baby Bentley, I call it. Um, the most important factor for me, simply, is to think outside of that box. This is just a car mirror, that's all. I'm using my off-camera flash so I can expose to that sky and bring in the detail. Again, if I wasn't using flash, that sky would probably be very bland, it would be very white, I wouldn't have the same impact at all. And um, Because we're using the flash, the flash is literally focused on our bride and groom there that are leaning against the back of the car. It makes them stand out, so they're popping straight away, um, making them stand out from the rest of it. And then you have this really, it's kind of a, um, a cool style when people see that. It's not something people think of all the time, going, oh, you know, how did you think of that? Because we think outside the box. And that's what people are going to want to see. They're going to want to see, what's he going to do next? So we think outside the box. We do simple little shots like this. They're not very hard to do. They take a few minutes, and it works a treat every time. It's about wowing that audience and people turning around and simply going, that's genius. Even though it's a simple little shot that you can do any time you really want to do it. Um, this one, yes, yes, this is a fantastic location. It's a Bishopton House. We actually have a studio set up down here. It's a really cool location. But again, as I was saying, we, we had this beautiful window light that we wanted to use. Now, I didn't actually have enough room to get the shot I wanted to get. So I had to use the mirror as a reflection. We improvised, we threw in a, a funky little pose as well, obviously to get the light to carve exactly where I wanted to carve. I was hanging back, and I just seen this, just under her. I shot under it to get the mirror and the reflection that I wanted. And you can see the light carving within the mirror, you can see it across the front of her body. And that is literally just a window light. Now, the light that's on, excuse me, the light that's on her arm and the our right, so her left side of the body, or no, her right, her right as well, sorry, she's facing the right way. That's actually just the light that's in the ceiling. Um, I know most people, you, you should never balance up your tongues and light and ceiling with your daylight, but if you get the Kelvin setting right, <laughs> it worked rather well, I think. Um, something again, by thinking outside the box, if you get restricted, mirrors, uh, reflections, reflections are always brilliant, um, people are always intrigued by them. So why not? Go for them, see what you can create. This is an example of a cracking location. This location is fantastic. Um, again, 
without the right light, without the right pose, or without the light emphasizing her body shape, it would not be half as good as as, as what it is. Um, this here is uh, it's Bloomfield House is what it's called. This room was never used. They all to use it only for like little conferences, but to never bring the bride and groom in. And we have a lovely day outside. We could have gone outside and we could have got the big lake to sit the back and we did later on. But I wanted to use this simply because it's not something that everybody would use. So when we go into this room and we do this shot, we've got that lovely window light coming in, splashed across the floor. It's obviously uh, splashed across the model here. Um, the chair was just there. We used it as a prop. Havers leaning on something because I needed that little bit of an extra incentive to tell that story that I was looking to tell. This, in my opinion, worked. It worked very, very well. But at the same place, in the exact same room, we took this. And this is a much nicer image. It doesn't do anything else with the location. It's just that one window. And that is actually the only stained glass window they have in that hotel, which is in that room, which they never, ever use. Um, because we went in there, and we have this shot, which is great, it's that nice location. To me, this one does not mean as much as this one does. Um, all because it's that beautiful light that's coming in. The pose is very simple. I, I don't think you can even call it directed or just to look toward, towards the window. And you have that lovely light carbon again, cutting in across the body. And whether she's in that big dress or whether she's nude, this is where all of this stemmed from. It all stemmed from being able to light the human form, being able to find those pockets of light. Now, obviously, you'll find the pocket of light by a window. Um, we were just lucky enough that we were able to expose for it and that the curtains were there. I did use a dab of flash to light those curtains. You, uh, they would have been just black otherwise, and we didn't want black curtains. So see what I mean about finding that light. You know, Don't get caught up with location. Look for those little pockets of light. Make sure you can find them. When you find them, you're rolling. You're, you're going to create some kind of magic. And then, yeah, I remember this shot. This shot is actually the Loading Bay. Uh, yeah, you, you can you can bet your butts nobody's taken a shot in the Loading Bay in this hotel before. Uh, but it was brilliant. I really liked the foliage. Uh, all natural light. I don't think there's any flash used there at all. It's actually just natural light, not even reflector. The light is just coming down very soft through the clouds. So it's, it's God's big softbox. And I have her just against the, the wall of the Loading Bay. The foliage was really, really cool. It just had the right color. It blended in with her hair. The leaves in front. Um, weren't actually there. Now I wanted something like that because I needed to make a bit more out of this image than you could just see. So we actually broke off a branch and we held the leaves over the camera as I'm shooting through it. But, and it, it always makes it like you're, you're looking in on something that you, you kind of shouldn't be, but it makes you look twice, doesn't it? Um, all because of three little leaves that were put in front of the lens, lovely bit of foliage, a nice bit of light. Again, nothing got to do with location. This one might have a bit to do with location. This one, <laughs> this is, it's a lovely location. It's really nice. So in this one, yeah, we're definitely, we're using this location, definitely. I actually have a two light setup on this one. Again, I have a large octobox just to our right, just to light our back. It's quite a soft light. And my trusty strip box is the far side of the gazebo here. And it's shot in through those ridges just to put that lovely kiss of light across the front of her body. You have the jetty that I'm using as a line in towards her. We have this beautiful uh, bit of tree here that's actually quite mirroring or her image. And then, of course, look at the sky. Um, it's fantastic. It's beautiful colors, everything. Now, this is not Photoshop. This is just getting the right exposure at the right time using the right light. Again, obviously, she has the right pose or direction, whichever you want to call it. And this one, I really hope you can see a story in because I definitely can. So you can see how all these factors are all coming together really well, all to create these jaw-dropping images that you're looking at going, wow. And simple little factors, just, just taking a step back, thinking about the shot as opposed to just shooting and hoping. Take that step back, take that extra bit of time and actually put the shot together in your head. Yeah, it'll take you an extra 30 seconds. It may even take you an extra minute. But at the end of the day, it's quality over quantity that we're going for. This shot was taken about four minutes afterwards. Um, different angle, um, same sky, same kind of clouds. Um, this one, yeah, there's an off-camera flash there. Now, in this one, I did have to Photoshop it out. I hate admitting that, but you can obviously tell. <laughs> you had to Photoshop out the flash in this one, but it works. Very, very well, in my opinion. Um, two shots taken in sequence in very close proximity, but two very different images. You can see there's a jetty. There she's walking on the jetty. It looks like that bit of sunlight is what's giving her that kiss of light, and she's walking out. 
uh, huge story in that one for me. Um, I, I hope you can see it. I really do. And just to track back for a sec, without location at all, because uh, what we've done here is we, we exposed to get rid of the background completely. This was taken in the huge ballroom and it just didn't do anything for the image. It, it really took away from the image when we had it lit like that. So this is actually two lights. It's two strip boxes, one either side, so twice the fun. And <laughs> we exposed, for obviously, uh, for the candles and put in our dab of flash. Uh, yeah, it might not sell this one to a bride, or you could. Completely depends on the type of couple that you have with you. For me, this works a treat. It's very Marie Antoinette, in my opinion. You know the way they said, let them eat cake. Well, we couldn't find cake. We were found for and <laughs> It was the best we could do at the time. Um, same thing with without location. Look at the stuff you can do. The right light, the right pose. Um, again, um, just going back up to our, our red and blue lit images. I know that's only one strip box in Baron Doors, but I'd normally light that with two strip boxes. And this here in tail, if I was to light her, even completely nude with the two strip boxes, I can get the exact same effect. The dress really doesn't mean a whole lot. It's all about that light carbon on the human form is the most important thing. Ah, this here was just sunlight, literally just natural sunlight crossing the body. Um, well, I suppose we'll use this little recap here. So just to recap, that's how I developed um, how do I developed to find light um, by lighting the naked form. That's how I developed my eye to find them pockets of light, to place their models, grooms, brides, whichever they may be, into them little pockets of light. Get that light carving going. Get those really nice images that are that really wow people. So when they look at them, they get something that's so unique, so completely out there that they just can't believe that was them in that in that image in that shot. This was taken very simply with just the sunlight. That's all we had. Um, you can, <laughs> it's gas because you can actually still see the clouds there on a sunny Irish day. It's brilliant. Any wonder where the palest people in the world. Um, exact same shot. Look, that's that's our model 11. Um, we're actually really looking forward to meeting her at the, the convention as well. She's coming along. So this is Devon here. Our model, that's the exact same place. Okay, right, we changed the color of the foliage and stuff. But this one, we doubled up on the sunlight with a bit of flash. Now, watch the difference. Just sunlight, lovely light carving, shadows in all the right places, highlights in all the right places. Pose fantastic, but you can expect that from Dev. And then you have the same pose, just a different angle and a dab of flash. And it's a whole different image. So if you are stuck for time on a wedding day, you can use this to your advantage. You went out and you had a play day, you used a nude model, you didn't use a nude model, whatever you preferred. But at the end of the day, you learned those couple of techniques that if I actually took a few steps to the right, threw in a bit of flash, got a new angle, even though our model or our bride never moved, I got an entirely different image, which in turn obviously saves you time and it makes you look even better because you can create so much from just one little spot without panicking and shooting for hope. Uh, this one here, if you look at the pattern, I hope you can see that pattern going across. Now the screen I'm using at the minute because of the, it's very bright. Um, so when I actually took this and edited it properly, it's quite a nice dark image with just the sunlight and the patterns coming in across your body. Now whether she's wearing a dress, whether she's wearing a, a cake, whatever you want her to wear, them patterns in that position will work really, really well. Uh, same thing. I know I sound like I'm going on and repeating myself, but again, this is how we learned how to do this, just from shooting new photography. And uh, in my opinion, it works very, very well. This was it was actually quite a challenge to get the light down low enough to balance in with the candlelight. Now obviously you can see the difference in the light of where we use it and stuff. But this location is huge. It's absolutely colossal. It's Charleville Castle in Tullamore, an amazing place. Really, really is. And we used one little mirror in that entire room. This is a huge big drawing room. And um, we used that one little mirror because that's what we were looking for. It had those lovely candles. It gave us something to to tell that little bit of story with with that pose that we were looking for. Set up our flash, feathered it across the body, got in our nice shadows, got in all that depth and just Wow, look at what we got. Absolutely brilliant, I think. I wanted to finish up with this one. This was the shoot I done specifically for our webinar, where I was showing you with the red and the blue gels as to how we could go. Um, I feel you could definitely, definitely have your bride in this position. Um, obviously, she'd be wearing the dress. You could throw in the bridal party around her. You could throw in the groom around her. Change the expression on her face. Make her just a little bit happier. Um, 
but for this, it really kind of sums it up for me. Um, whether no matter what she's wearing, this is just a satin. We have the satin blow on there with the wind. We have that huge big soft box that I have off to the right again, just resembling window light. This could be the hotel. It could be the hotel bedroom. It could be. It could literally be anywhere you wanted to be with a chaise long, a couch, anything you want. And it works remarkably well. Look at the light carbon. You see how the features are all implemented. They're all exaggerated. All because the light is done right. If that light was fired straight at her, it'd be very flat lit. There'd be no shadows. There'd be no drama. There'd be no life in the image. But because we have it feathered across the body, because we have her lit properly, and again, no matter what she's wearing, you can create a very similar style in any location. All you need is a window light. And you'd be flying. You'd literally be laughing. And I hope that really works for you. If I can give you anything from this webinar, is I hope you can think outside the box. You can throw in that feather lighting. You can start to use off-camera flash maybe a little bit more. Or maybe just use uh, funky angles. Maybe to try something different. You turn the body away from the light and the face to the light. No matter what light it is, it will always help. And once you get those shadows, once the light begins to carve those features, it will give you more drama in your images. And just to recap, for the very last time, I promise I will not say this again. <laughs> for me, the very first thing in any location, no matter where I go, is light. After that, I have pose. Why is she in that light? What is she doing? There's your pose. Story. We need to be able to tell that story as to why she's in that light, why she's posing like that. Then, of course, if you really want you need, well, not if you really want, but you need your light, you need your pose, you need your story. You, if you have a location you really want to use it, bring in the location. Not a must for me, but the impact or emotion, definite. Bring the whole lot together and create some really, really amazing art. And I, I hope you guys do. I really do. So I wanted to bring up if anybody had any questions and answers, and hopefully I can answer them for you. Uh, Ken, thank you, mate. And yes is the answer to questions. So, uh, so get yourself sat nice and comfortable. <laughs> we'll get started. <laughs> um, before I before I rub the screen back, because I want to share some information about your masterclass while we go through the questions. Um, can I just get you uh, quite quickly to jump back a few slides? The two slides you had of, I think you said your model was called Devon. The one which was natural light, and the one that was flash. Brilliant. Um, the question that I had before I forget and so why I wanted you to jump back was uh, when you were showing us the, the girl with the red head, uh, in the natural light shot, are you using any uh, reflectors at all or um, is it just purely the position of the light there? Would you believe the bit of reflection is actually coming from the wall? It's the grey wall is actually lightening up the shadows and because the light is quite soft, like it's not hard sunlight. It's, the light is coming through a cloud. Um, because it's quite soft and with the reflection on the wall, that's what's lifting the shadows. There's no reflector, there's no other off-camera flash, it's literally just God's light. <laughs> Excellent. Brilliant. Okay, well, you've answered that question for me. We asked this quite early on, and uh, I think it's just because I'm not familiar with the lights, that the Bowens lights that you use. Um, so I think just a couple of people just asked, um, that it's, it's the, the smaller portable light from Bowens. It's not a full-on studio flash, is it? Uh, ooh, it actually is. Oh, it is? Okay, brilliant. <laughs> but it's, the small, it's the smaller head. They're the Bones 400 hours. Um, Google is your friend on this one, but they're actually the full-on studio lights. And how are you, how are you powering studio. them on a wedding? Ah, we have a little travel pack. Um, very about the size of a car battery, and it actually connects up to them exactly, like specifically for them. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Ellen Car ones, if anyone recognises them. You know the little, the single battery pack, only yep. it's a double one, and it does two flashes at a time. That's what I just judge, and, and that's my ignorance, so I apologise. That was what I thought it was similar to the Elencon Quadra, which is what we're familiar with here, which is exactly what you're on about there. So, but so, so just again, so everybody knows now. So it is actually a, a small portable studio flash you're using uh, with a portable battery pack, basically, uh, to, to yeah. power them. Perfect, brilliant. So you've and that explains obviously to be able to use the the bigger soft boxes that you've been referring to as well. Uh, so that's excellent. So you've. Tick of the box, Jay, shut up, I got it wrong, uh, and I've learned today, learned today myself, brilliant. Um, okay, this was quite a nice question, um, related to obviously you being in Ireland, um, how, do you, how do you find sourcing models, especially with the nude work, where Ireland is sort of quite typically conservative? Really difficult. <laughs> that is the, the short answer to that one. It's very, very hard. Um, I'll tell you 
any time that we tend to find one, there's always a friend or there's someone that's there going, oh God, no, geez, you can't shoot nude. What do the neighbors think? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, Model Mayhem has been, I've only joined it very recently. I probably should have a long time ago, but I've only actually joined it recently and they seem to be very, very good. We've already found two models through that. Uh, so yeah, obviously we do a lot of nude workshops and a lot of nude work ourselves in South Wales. Uh, and you're right, it's just using the model sites. And obviously there are sites there where specifically sections for, for the models who are prepared to work uh, nude and so on. And obviously um, they'll they'll tell you what they're prepared and what they're not prepared to do photography wise. So, uh, so I guess model sites is the best advice. So obviously we're talking and now we've shed a little bit more light on the fact that uh, it's obviously sort of studio lights that you're using. Um, obviously shooting in manual mode then and are you metering as you go Ken? Absolutely. Um, I use my eye a lot. Um, I know you should in theory use a light meter but it only slows me down. So I actually balance everything with my eye. Um, same thing, I take my exposure from the sky. Um, now obviously it depends on the area I'm looking for so you got to watch for that spill of light. If we're going completely against the light then maybe it's best to overexpose a little bit so you can lift those bit of shadows, if trees or whatever you want in the background. So I always tend to try and get a bit of side lighting going across so there will be light on the background and I can well, underexpose my sky to a point. Like I said, I like to balance it and keep it a fine balance as opposed to going too dark with it. And then I expose my models or bright and grooms, whichever it is, with my flash. You do another thing with the bones. Uh, I know I said it in it, it is very handy to have an assistant with them. We've had a few very windy days and I can honestly tell you if I didn't have Anya with me, they were gone. They were blown very far away and there was no way I was catching them. I'm going to jump back to another, somebody's asked a question again about one of the earlier images. Uh, I have taken the screen back so it would be hard to find it. If you remember the image you showed us quite early on of the bride and groom in the car and you've shot through the window and you've got the rain on the, win on the yeah. window screen. Um, What's uh, how exactly did you was it best? Uh, sorry, um, how was that it lit exactly to bring out the reflections in the glass? Was that was that off camera flash? That was, and that was my trusty uh, strip box. Um, where that is, she's obviously at the back door, and I have our groom leaning in very close to the window. Now the bit of natural light that we have is already coming down towards our groom's face, but I doubled up on that with our strip box, so it's actually. If you can picture the bonnet of the car, this is where I would have the strip box against that, just shining down towards it. So it's more of a split lighting on him than anything else. And it also goes just that little bit in the window to light that little bit of our face as well. But a good bit of that is just a nice bit of light that we have on the day. Because it's an overcast day, we've got a very soft light with a big expand on it. So it's quite easy to get that little exposure from herself. And the raindrops, in my opinion, just added to it. Absolutely, bud. Uh, we're getting we're getting close to the end, mate. Just a couple left. Um, so uh, somebody's been saying and just wondered if uh, that noticed that with your model work specifically, um, the the clarity in the skin of the models looks very quite soft and and almost porcelain. Are you doing any finishing there, or is that purely in camera? Any any advice on on to get that look? Um, do you know? I nearly edit them all differently, to be honest. Because <laughs> when I go out with the models. I'm always just looking for something new or I've got new techniques in mind that I want to try. So it's nearly always different. So sorry to give you a short answer, but why most popular one would be frequency separation. I'm a big fan of that. Used proportionately. A lot of people overcook it. If you do, it will look terrible. And the last one is a high pass frequency that I like to use. Brilliant. Excellent. So Ken, one final time, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it was a first for you. And I hope it wasn't too terrifying. No, I absolutely loved it. Um, I really hope we can come back again sometime and, uh, you know, we'll tell a few more stories. Oh, I'd, have, the whiskey. I'd love to have you back. We'll have you back without a doubt. In the new year, we'll have a chat. We'll meet in January. We'll make some plans. And I'm sure uh, maybe we can look at some, you know, maybe more detailed into lighting setups and things like that. We'll have a chat when we meet in January and we'll put something together and we'll definitely have you back. I'd be more than happy to have you back on that thank you all for joining us have a good uh, have a good night rest of the night wherever you are bye now <laughs>